Hey, greetings everybody. Today we're going to take a look at this Sentec Digital Battery Analyzer, which of course, as you guessed it, is a Harbor Freight product made in China. Normally I don't buy electronics test equipment from Harbor Freight. I would go with a, a Fluke, but in this case I'm not really planning on using it that much. And this was about half the price. It had pretty good reviews online, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a chance. Anyway, we've got a little battery central here. <clears throat> and to start with, we have this just over three year old Walmart Everstart Max battery. It came out of a Ford F 150. It uh, went completely dead. I tried to charge it up with the battery charger. <clears throat> this is about the third time. And as you can see, this um, particular Schumacher charger here saying bad battery. So. What we're going to go ahead and do is disconnect this battery charger, put the tester on there, and see if it confirms it. <coughs> okay, first thing we do, we're going to go ahead and hook the positive up, the red to the positive and the black to the negative. and press the power on switch. Now the battery as you can see actually powers the tester itself. What it's doing right now is going through its little self test mode and it'll do that forever until you press uh, OK for example. Now what it wants you to do is put into the rated cold cranking amps. This particular battery is rated at 850. So we'll use this up arrow here to do that. It is a little uh, slow, you can't press them really fast. Then we want to move over to the uh, tens digits, press the select button here, and change that to 50. <clears throat> and now we're ready to go ahead and do a test. I'm going to press OK. It's running through this little testing process here. Okay, it's completed. Now this is indicating that the battery is charge is too low to even really do an effective test. But the problem is it won't hold a charge. <laughs> so also we see up here this NG at the top. And it may be difficult for you. It stands for no good. Normally if the battery would be testing good, you have a little word over here that displays that says good. And we see that the battery has 11.75 volts. And the other thing of interest here is the resistance of the battery, which is in milliohms. And this particular battery is coming in at 113 right now. The guide says a good range is between 7 and 13 milliohms. If it gets much above that, much above 20, they say the battery is probably no good. However, the caveat is, after you charge a battery, which I just had this on the charger, or if it's sitting in your car and you've been running the car, so the alternator is charging the battery, the resistance is going to be high, so you're supposed to let the battery rest a while before doing an effective test. But in any regard, it's about the third time I've tested this battery, and I'm concluding it's no good. So back to Walmart. Unfortunately, we just missed the uh, free replacement by one month. So there's supposed to be a pro rate on this. We'll see what happens there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and test this marine battery, also an Everstar from Walmart. This is a, a deep cycle marine battery that I bought to do a little solar project with. So once again, we'll put the red on the positive first, and then we'll put the black on the negative. And we'll go ahead and power tester up. It's running through its self-test. Press the OK button. Now we're going to put in the cold cranking amps. This one is rated at 845. Select for, as you can see, you can't press this very fast. And then make this five. It goes right from zero to five. And then we're going to go ahead and say OK.
Now here this one is coming back saying low as well. You can see the little indicator here. It's right about at zero. And 12.38 volts. And it's got an internal resistance of 84 milliohms, which according to our uh, book is not good. But then again, the battery is too low to really effectively test. And it is a new battery. It has been sitting around for a few months without a charge on it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put this battery charge in this battery and let it charge up and see what it says after that. Okay, I'm going to test one last battery. This battery is probably six years old. It's a Delcor, D-E-L-K-O-R, Japanese battery. It actually came out of an Iseki tractor, subcompact tractor I have. Just didn't have enough cold cranking amps to turn the tractor over in the winter time, even though it tests good. So I went ahead and replaced the battery with an interstate battery with a little higher CCAs. And now the tractor works great. In any regard, this has been sitting here without a charge on it for quite some time. And as you can see, it's shoving 13.3 volts and a little over 16 milliohms, which, if you remember, is uh, not bad because it had a good range. It was between, I believe, 7 and 13. Anything over 20 is not good. And it's showing a battery uh, capacity here of about 40%. And if you can see at the very top, there is a little exclamation and a triangle sign. Probably because the battery is not fully charged, but it's, at least it's not saying that the battery is no good. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put the charger on here and bring this up to a full charge and let it rest a while and see what the battery tester says about this guy. I just plugged this marine battery into the uh, Schumacher charger here. just wanted to show you. We have set up a standard battery, charging at a 6 amp rate. And this tester just started up, showing it. 78% capacity on the battery and voltage of 14.9 uh, volts. So I'll go ahead and let this thing complete and then we'll put the Santec battery charger back on and see what it says then. Okay, here's this uh, tractor battery which I had replaced with the interstate batteries because it had enough cold cranking amps. And this has on, been on the charger and has a full charge now according to the charger. And both these batteries have uh, been resting all day, so it's been at least eight hours that they've been off the charger. And if you recall earlier, the book says that, uh, actually not the book, but some internet research says that when you charge a battery, typically the internal resistance is going to increase. So you should let them rest before you do any testing. Anyway, here's what this guy is reporting. Reporting 13 uh, volts, which is good. 11.85 milliohms which is right in the range that the guy that came with this tester says is good, they say 9 to 12. And then up at the top you'll see that the bar is at about, I don't know, say 50% and it has an exclamation mark there. As I said before, that bar is determined by the cold cranking amp value rating of the battery. This particular battery does not have a CCA labeled on the outside. And it's such a strange off-brand that I couldn't find the specs on it anywhere on the internet, so I just guessed 500. You know, chances are the CCA may be actually less, which would give us an erroneous reading here. So if you don't know the exact CCA and you guess, don't be uh, surprised if your battery shows either too low a capacity or too high a capacity. I guess, actually, I'll go ahead and do a little demonstration for you here. I'm going to do is we'll start this tester over again and put in a lower CCA value, which should make this bar graph go up quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, turn it back on. Self testing. Let's put it down to 400. It's going to run through the test. See, sure enough, now the capacity is showing up about 70-75%. So, once again, it's all based on whatever CCA value you enter. And they say anything less than 40% means the battery is pretty much worn out, get a new one. 40 to 60% says it's weak and they should be considering a replacement. 68, 60 to 80% says the battery is uh, workable. And, of course, 80 to 100 would mean it's in good condition. Okay, there you have it. There's your Centec Digital Battery Analyzer. Centec, of course, is the Harbor Freight uh, brand name. This is for our 12 volt automotive batteries. And as we just demonstrated, it can test the uh, voltage of a battery, the internal resistance. Typically, they're saying that 9 to 12 milliohms is a good range. 
anything over 20 and you probably need to be looking at it or thinking about a new battery anyway one caveat there is that as batteries are charged they say the internal resistance of the battery is going to increase therefore you should give it a resting period before you do any testing you get an accurate test result these particular batteries have been resting all day I took the charger off uh, probably around noon today and it's about midnight now this um, tester will also give you the battery capacity based on the CCA value, the cold cranking amps that you put in, what the battery is rated at. So here it's saying 70% uh, 70, 70 capacity in its current state. And then there's just a general indicator whether or not the battery is okay or if it's shot and needs to be replaced. All right, it's probably about $60 I think I paid for it a few months ago. I didn't want to spend the additional money two to three times the price for a name brand like a Fluke because I don't use it that often, just a homeowner. And when I have something that I can just handily test a battery to see if it needs to be replaced or if it just needs a good good charging. So uh, if you're in a similar situation, this may be a good solution for you. We'll see how it holds up. Or if uh, money's no object, I'd probably ditch the uh, Chinese stuff and go with a nice American-made uh, name brand unit. All right, hope you found this helpful. Cheers.